Now we're talking about the derivatives of the inverse of the big three, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent. Yes, what am I gonna need you to do? I'm gonna need you to rememberize these things, right? Right, because over here at math5fives.com we have standards. At math5fives.com we have standards. Okay, maybe you wanna use these standards to remember these three. T he, T he, the derivative with respect to x of the sine inverse of u is du du dx divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay, but what about the co-functions? I thought the derivatives of the co-functions were going to be negative, and they are. Yes, you're taking the derivative of the outside and multiplying it by the derivative of the inside, aka chain rule over root one minus u squared. Okay, ready, 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 I'm ready. The derivative of the inverse tangent of u is du du dx divided by one plus u squared. Okay, right, all right, fine. What do we have here? We got um, derivatives of the inverse trigonometric functions. Yes, go into some examples. Oh, way, oh, way. We want to take the derivative of the inverse tangent of the square root of x. So here we're going to let u equal, wait for it, is this x to the one half? Yes. So then du du dx is going to be, wait for it, one half x to the minus one half. Yeah, which is going to be, oh, way, one over two root x. Yeah, we're proficient in our algebra, so this little bit is no problem. Uh-huh. So then, if I'm looking for y prime, I know it's the derivative of u with respect to x. 1 over 2 root x divided by 1 plus u squared root x squared. Finish him. Clean that up. Yeah, so then this is 1 over 2 roots of x times 1 plus x. Very nice. You can multiply it out, but hey, why don't we just leave it like that? And a flower. Now I'm taking the derivative of this inverse sine. Oh boy, I'm gonna use those forms that I rememberized. Yeah, so then, here my u gonna be, here my u gonna be, u gonna be 2x plus 1. Fun, du du dx is gonna be 2. Uh huh, sure. Finish him. So then, if I am looking for y prime, mm hmm, yeah, maybe I'm a Decepticon. No, they had, okay, fine, back to the math. It's gonna be du du dx or 2 over the square root of 1 minus my u squared, 2x, haha, <laughs> cute, plus 1, very nice, why don't I clean that up a little bit, yes, 1 is going to be 2 over, wait for it, square root of, ooh, 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 hey, fight. And this is going to be minus 2x. I see I'm probably going to have some type of domain restriction in that denominator. Yeah, because I know I can never divide by a negative, so here my x is going to have to be negative. So yeah, um, mm, uh, e, uh, ooh, done. So is this marker. Yes! I'm over here. Oi, up here we see. Wait for it. I forgot to square that last one. Dag, I wasn't done. That was a premature flower. This one should have been squared. Oh no! So that's gonna change a few things. Uh-huh, this denominator down here ain't gonna be like that, is it? No, y prime is equal to two divided by, wait for it, this multiplies out to be four x squared, mm-hmm. This one times that one, double it, plus four x, Okay, plus one. Then I see my ones are gonna reduce when I deduce that. Oh, disgust. So this is gonna be the square root of minus four 
times x times x plus 1. And now you're going to have that this discussion about those domain restrictions. All right, fine. Far out. This is the one with the box. That's the one with the real flower. Oh, wait. Up here I see I have a quotient. Heavens to Murgatroyd. Oh, boy. I wish I had a way to take the derivative of a quotient, and I do. It's called the quotient rule. Uh-huh. Y prime. This is going to be low. D high. Minus high. Low. All over Lolo. Yeah. Okay. Finish him. Yeah. This is going to be x times the derivative of the inverse cosine. It's going to be minus 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Here my u is x. Yes. Um, minus the cosine inverse um, times x. Yes. No, cosine inverse of x times 1 on the bird, x squared. Oh, sick with it, lean with it, rock with it, split those two fractions with it, reduce the x's with it, and then you have a minus 1 all over the square root of 1 minus x squared, and I'm with it, minus 1 over x squared cosine inverse of x, and I think that's about as done as it's gonna get. So then, so then, ha, ha, whoop, stick a fork in it. Cause you're done.